In this clip, I'm going to explain in detail the importance of uh, approaching the, the, the syntax or the commands correctly when you're working on Excel and you're planning on then running the commands in Excel or checking them in a Moodle quiz. So what I have here is some questions that um, relate to a, a table or a, a set of data called programmers. So here's my data, I have 50 programmers. And then I have a series of questions based on them. So the, the questions utilize or uh, they demonstrate a lot of Excel functions. So the second, the question two here has lots of questions that use various functions like count if and count ifs, sum if, etc. And if you're planning on uh, then checking those questions in a Moodle quiz, when the question is nice and short, like question one here, which is how many programmers have earning of 45,000 or more, the actual command here is fairly straightforward. It's count if, and then the criteria for the, uh, the earnings column, which is column G, and the expression greater than or equal to 45,000. So there's only really one way of answering that question in Excel. When you get down to a question that has more than one criteria, so here we're looking for programmers in question six who are graduates of Trinity, who have 21 years experience and who work in the healthcare sector. So here there's three aspects to the question. Uh, we're looking for people who went to university in Trinity, which is column J, have 21 years experience, which is column N, and who work in the healthcare sector. So in this question, I need to factor in the Trinity element column uh, J, the years experience column N and the sector column uh, M. So in my solution, when I write the command in Excel, what I do is the first condition I have relates to column J. The first criteria I have relates to column J and the Trinity value. The second part of it relates to the 21 years, which is column N, and the third part relates to column M, the healthcare sector. So the point I'm trying to make is that when you're answering this question in Excel and when you're writing the formula or the function, bear in mind the order of the wording in the question. So that's why I deal with the Trinity part first, the experience part second, and the healthcare part third. Okay, the other thing that I want to point out uh, in this um, answer at the minute is that in the Trinity part, I say equals Trinity, okay? Uh, you could get away with just Trinity there, but I have just put in the equal symbol. In any case where uh, it's something like this, I'm putting an equal symbol in front of it, okay? So likewise, healthcare has an equal symbol in front of it. And if you go down to say question seven, you'll notice that the, it says how many programs are junior grade have earnings at least 30,000 and 25 years experience. So again, there's three components to this question. There's the junior, there's the um, the earnings of 35,000, 30,000 rather, at least 30,000, and there's the 25 years experience part of it, the under 25 years experience. So again, if we look at the answer to that, we'll see that the solution deals with the junior part first, the 30,000 bit second, and the less than 25 years third. So again, the Excel answer follows the flow of the question. So if it comes to a point where you're copying that answer across to a Moodle quiz, it needs to be in that order. So in question seven, it needs to be junior, 30,000 and 25 in that order in the Excel solution. Otherwise Moodle will, if you mix them up, if you put the 25 years first, the junior grade second and the 30,000 euro third, Moodle will mark that incorrect. So if you go back to the introduction to the document again, this is where I spell out that in detail. So what I have here is uh, about halfway down the introductory document, I have a question which says, how many programmers are senior grade, have earnings of at least 40,000 and are under 36 years of age, 36 years experience, sorry. So if I wasn't gonna check this formula in Moodle, I wouldn't need to worry about the senior 
followed by the 40,000, followed by the 36 years. But because I'm going to execute or uh, check this in Moodle, when I write my count ifs function, because there's multiple conditions in it, I deal with the senior bit first, because that's the first part of the question. Then I deal with the 40,000, because that's the middle part of the question. And finally, I deal with the 36, because that's the last part of the question. So in other words, when the question has multiple kind of uh, criteria, or is a longer question like this one, please write the function or the solution where, you where the question solution follows the order of the question. So the sequence in the question was senior, grade, 40,000 euro, and 36 years experience. And my answer here has senior grade, 40,000 and 36 years experience. So that's the correct approach. The other aspect of this answer I'll just deal with as well is that sometimes in Excel, we might be inclined to leave a space or two, uh, say after a comma. So if I did that, and I left it as it is now, where I have spaces after some of the commas, and if I were to copy all this across to Moodle, Moodle would mark it as incorrect. So the guideline I'm giving you is, unless spaces are necessary, take them out. Don't put them in at anywhere. So I'm going to remove all these spaces, and again, if I have to run this in Moodle in a quiz, Moodle would now mark it correct again. Down below, uh, I have two incorrect versions of the same answer. So here I've deliberately uh, broken the sequence. So the first case here, in this if statement, I've put things in complete reverse order. I have the 36 years as the first part of the uh, criteria, followed by the 40,000 euro in the middle, and last is the senior. So Moodle will mark this as an incorrect answer. So the, the two things to follow is the follow the ordering of the uh, follow the order of the words in the question when you're devising the solution. Be very careful with leaving spaces. And as I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, in an earlier part of the clip, uh, for situations like here where I need, uh, where I'm just start testing, testing for exactly senior, I'm now putting in equal symbols in all of those cases. So put an equal symbol in piece of any exact text match that you're looking at. So hopefully that'll get you on the right path and give you good guidance when you're trying to do the Excel questions and then check your answers in Moodle. That's the end of the clip.